guys welcome back to another episode today i wanted to do something a little bit different than working on japanese cars i've been getting a lot of comments and questions asking about the gx470 and what i want to do for y'all today is go over the five most expensive items for you to replace on your gx470 if you're going to own it for five years this is something that they don't really tell you on most of the vlogs. Yes, it's a Lexus. Yes, it's a Toyota. Yes, it's very reliable. But there are some expensive items that you're going to have to replace. Not just maintenance items. We're not talking brake pads here. Uh, we're talking about actual hard items you've got to replace on this car. Or I had to replace after owning it for five years. You might be shocked at some of the prices of these items. You might be mad that I actually had to replace the items. You might even not have to replace the items yourselves on your own rig, but I had to replace them. It actually adds up. All right, the first item that's actually shockingly expensive to replace, or at least that I had to replace within five years of ownership is the brake booster mechanism system, whatever you want to call it, this whole piece. And I've had to replace this piece two times in my car. Uh, one time I had to replace it. I was off-roading and it totally went kaput. I didn't know what was wrong with the car and I had to tow it home. Um, and then afterwards, after I popped in a new one, the spare, the rebuilt unit went out on me. I had to replace this item two different times. Each time you buy this item, you can buy it brand new from Lexus for $1,500, depending on the dealership. So I bought a reconditioned unit for $600. Now the problem with these is that you have an electric diaphragm that pressurizes your brakes with your brake fluid here and usually this unit goes bad now the pro tip is if it's going bad on you you hear it clicking on and 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 putting pressure in the system you could probably service this it's just a seal with a pump taking it off with a 17 millimeter cleaning everything with a rag and putting it all back together you might lose some brake fluid but this could get you home and it could solve your problem or it could go bad altogether if it's cycling too much it's gonna go bad and so you need to address it. So right off the bat, uh, this went out basically year three of ownership from this car. And that was 600 bucks right off the bat. Boom, done. The second thing you're gonna have to replace on your GX470 are the headlights. Now you're gonna say to me, hey, headlights, why don't you just cut and buff them and clean them? Hey, listen, I've done that. I've cut and buffed them and cleaned them twice. I've sanded it down with 400 grit, went up to 3,000 grit, went up to 5,000 grit, put a new clear coat over the top of it. But eventually, they're just not gonna be up to snuff if you keep restoring your headlights. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of money. Eventually, you're gonna have to buy new headlights. I just went and I got Depot headlights because I like the way they look. Uh, the beam pattern suffice for me. Um, the tabs are nice and new. A lot of people get these headlights and they take them to a brand like BX Built or some uh, retrofitter to put a more powerful projector in there and more power to you. Those companies are in business because a lot of people are replacing their headlights because they need to. And so just the headlights alone can go anywhere between 380 to 500 bucks. And if you do a retrofit kit, you're looking at 900 to 1000. Um, if you're going to have the GX470 for quite some time like I did, you're going to have to replace some very critical items in your engine bay. This one might be a duh to some of you, but you have to do it. And for me, that was thermostat and timing belt and water pump all in one. It's all underneath this in here, um, kind of in the back of the engine. You can't really see it very well here, but the timing belt fits under this case here. And then the and then the water pump and the thermostat thermostats right underneath here and water pumps in there. And the reason why I say all three of those items is because timing belts every 70 to 75,000 miles could be faster, could be longer, depending on where you live. Water pump is the lifeblood of your engine. If you're pulling everything off, you might as well replace that. And the thermostat, believe it or not, goes bad. I've had two thermostats in here and I've replaced the timing belt and water pump once. You got your brake booster slash master cylinder type thing. You definitely need to replace your headlights. And then finally, not finally, you're definitely gonna need to replace timing belt water pump. Now I've replaced some other things in the engine like PCV valve and stuff like that, but those aren't too expensive and most everyone aren't, aren't gonna need to replace those. But right off the bat, we have three items in the engine bay that you're going to need to replace or probably gonna to have to replace if you own one of these bad boys for more than a couple years. Let's close down the engine bay and move on to other items. If you wheel like I do, I take care of my rig, I service it, I check the bolts, I 
grease all the bearings. I really love this truck. It's been everywhere. Cue some of the footage that I've taken it. But one thing is, if you're gonna be overlanding in this car, you're gonna be taking it on a lot of environments, you're gonna to have to replace, believe it or not, the wheel bearings. I haven't had to replace the wheel bearings in the back, but I have had to replace the wheel bearings on both sides in the front. And the way you know you have, an, uh, or you have a bad wheel bearing, you jack the vehicle up in the air and you grab three and nine on the wheel and you move it. And if it actually wiggles three and nine, and then you grab 12 and six, and you move it and if it moves wiggles a little bit 12 and 6 and 3 and 9 you probably have a wheel bearing issue if it only rotates or wiggles in one of those planes then it could be ball joint uh, a bolt it could be something like that but if it's actually just a little bit wiggly woggly all around yeah wiggly woggly you probably have a wheel bearing and believe it or not i've put on about 60,000 miles on this rig and i've had to replace wheel bearings twice I live in Washington, but I used to live in Southern California and I would wheel maybe once every two months and eventually those items go bad. Wheel bearings for me is about a $250 job. I do them myself pretty fast now because I've done it so much, but that's something to consider. So we have four items already. We have the brake master cylinder. We have the headlights, oddly enough. Uh, we have the water pump and timing belt and thermostat, and then we have the wheel bearings. And then finally, on the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put on this list, which you're probably gonna have to replace if you're rocking 35s like I am. Uh, this is a maybe. You don't necessarily have to replace this item, but if you don't replace this item and you have such a big tire and you wheel hard, you're probably gonna break it and it's the stock rear end. I don't have an upgraded rear end in my rig. You could say to me, hey Mike, whoa, you don't have one, why are you recommending that we need to buy one? Because uh, yours is fine. Yeah, mine is fine. Uh, but I stopped wheeling in this rig. In fact, we have a new rig over here. But the factory eight inch rear end does not like 35 inch tires, especially very heavy ones without a re-gear. And that's exactly what I have. And when I say it doesn't like it, I mean it won't break if you're driving on the street uh, or odds are it won't. But if you're wheeling and the tires are skipping and you're giving a lot of gas and they catch, you're gonna pop your pinion. That alone right now is between $2,500 and $4,000. So, but the good way, the reason why it's on the list with an asterisk is because if you run 32s or 33s or super lightweight wheel and tire setup, you probably don't need one. And I say this because I've had this on this rig and it's never broke. And I've taken this rig everywhere and I wheel it very carefully and I don't beat up on my stuff and it's been fine. But if you aren't like me and you like to beat up on your stuff and you bought one of these to go pretty hard in the paint with, you're probably going to need a rear end. One more thing that you're going to need to replace on your GX470 if you plan on having it for five years. And this is an optional one. Um, most people who have a GX470 are going to end up lifting it anyway, so this may not apply to you, but if you plan on keeping it stock and the cars are 2005 through 2009 or whatever, you're going to have to replace the rear suspension airbags. They're going to leak. They're over 10 years old at this point, and GX470's owners like to drive their cars and implement weather and whatever, so they're going to get weathered and brittle and they might start leaking. Mine were leaking when I got my car five years ago. I ended up switching them out for some coils courtesy of Eibach, but I wanted to throw that on the list because I know a lot of people who own GX470s and plan on keeping them stock have to end up replacing those. They just get old. So we're gonna jump back into the list, but before we get into uh, everything else, just think optional, you might have to replace the rear airbags. Other than that, let's resume the rest of the video. So if we do the quick math here, we're going to do a rear end and I'm going to do the low prices, 2,500 bucks. We're going to do wheel bearings. Let's call it 300 bucks. That's 2,800. We're going to call headlights, 400 bucks round up. That's 3,200 bucks. We're going to call the timing belt, water pump, all that. We're going to call that 500 bucks, 3,700 bucks. And we're going to call the, uh, brake master cylinder or, or whatever it is, booster pump. We're gonna call that 600. So that's 4,300. I hope I did my math correctly. I don't know if I didn't, I'll dub it. 4,300 bucks 
to own this GX for five years. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because nobody tells you this stuff. They just say, hey, maintain it, it'll last forever, it's a Lexus, it's great. Yes, it is great. And in, in fact, it's still more reliable than 90% of the rigs out there on the road. But you need to know, if you're gonna have a GX470, this is a 2009, it's pretty old, you might be into it for 4,500 bucks on top of what you paid for it. That's all I wanted to do. Just wanted to sh give you guys a quick little five items Five of the most expensive items you're gonna have to change on the GX470 if you plan on keeping it for a few years and you plan on overlanding in it. If you don't plan on doing any of that stuff and it's just gonna be a garage queen, then ignore this video. <laughs> now I have a ton of other items on here like you know lights, lighters, rack, awning. Those are not must replace items. Those are just things I wanted to do. So I'm not gonna count them in this video. Uh, wheels and tires, upper control arms, lift kit, none of that is a must. Uh, I wanted to make this video real quick and real fast because I've been getting tons of comments on the GX saying, hey, can we see more of that rig? Can you show us what you've got done to it? And before I get into any of that, I wanted to give people who are on the market for a GX470 because now is a good time to buy one, a little bit of a preview of what they can expect with GX470 ownership. It's not a horrible car to own, it's a fantastic car to own, but it is an old car and you're gonna run into some old car problems, and I hope that helps. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.